an ongoing issue of trying to make sure that that um, if we're going to stop people reoffending, then we need to make sure that their their support is offered um, post release or after they've finished their um, their sentence. So, and and we're still dealing with that today. I mean, these these were issues that were trying to be dealt with um, 20 and 30 years ago. My name's um, Ollie Kickett. I'm I come from Western Australia originally. Um, I started work in um, Canberra in 1986, spent some time in the public service, um, then heard about the job being advertised in um, South East and Aboriginal Legal Service and I applied for that. Um, and I think I spent two and a half years as the CEO. Um, predominantly I was sort of um, in Canberra. This Canberra is where my family um, live and so I worked out of Canberra um, for most of the time and visited Nara for two days a week and Maruyu on the other day um, and I guess that posed a lot of challenges in terms of being able to um, provide effective um, role as a CEO. It was a quite a, a challenging job and one that I quite enjoyed um, so and I, I suppose when coming from government and seeing how the government you know, um, works and then going to a non-government um, organisation, it's quite different. And so um, I could see, you know, how things were working in a, in a community level and um, thought that my experience in the government would help that process. So there's certainly the communities that I had a lot of involvement in in this role were, were certainly um, very passionate about um, the ALS itself. I mean, they were, you know, when you're talking about people's freedoms and their legal rights, I mean, that generates generally generates a fair bit of passion and interest from from people and um, I think um, you could see that I guess in the board certainly the board were very passionate people about you know where the legal service was going and what it was doing and how it was meeting the needs of the community so Gary Pudney was the principal solicitor and um, I'm not quite sure of the other solicitors that was um, another one in, in our office Jim Jeffrey, I think, was in the Canberra office at the time. So I think at the time it would have been five or six lawyers. Um, so it would have been two per office. Um, and you know, we where we had to, we could rely on the Legal Aid Commission or you know other solicitors to you know um, fill in where they could. But invariably, I mean, most of the time it was handled between the six lawyers, two in Nara, two in Canberra, and to in Maria at the time. My experience of working for the legal service in WA, um, they were very similar in, in a lot of ways. So they were, you know, you'd, you'd have your normal run-of-the-mill um, guest charges or, or issues that um, with the law, breaking the law. You know, you'd have your assaults and disorderly conducts and and issues like that. And you'd have the odd serious offence of you know, murder or something similar to that. But that, you know, they weren't that often. Um, but I think um, the, the issues that I found quite similar were the influence of alcohol on our communities and how it impacted on people's lives in terms of you know being in contact with the law. Um, and I think you'd find that probably similar to a lot of other communities as well. Uh, in terms of specific programs or um, services available for Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people for alcohol or drugs, there wasn't much at all. And um, I don't think there's much even today. Um, so it's an ongoing issue of trying to make sure that that um, if we're going to stop people reoffending, then we need to make sure that their, their support is offered um, post release or after they've finished their, um, their sentence. So, and, and we're still dealing with that today. I mean, these, these were issues that were trying to be dealt with um, 20 and 30 years ago, and we're still trying to deal with them today. So it surprises me that, um, you know, that governments haven't really understood the issues here and um, put resources into to dealing with recidivism and reoffending and um, making sure the services are offered you know, post-release. It has always been um, a struggle to, to get um, people to, to understand what was happening in terms of Aboriginal imprisonment or incarceration rates. Um, that hasn't changed. The, the number of deaths in custody probably hasn't changed all that much. Um, and even with over 300 recommendations from the Royal Commission, 
governments are still trying to deal with the rec those recommendations and and um, and how they're implemented effectively. Um, so, you know, that's an ongoing issue that will probably be um, continue for some time. I think. So it was always operating on a shoestring budget, you know, um, and and then there are times when we were asked to to um, look at our staff and um, you know, to, to rein in our expenditure. And I, I, mean, I formed the view that um, we would never let staff go. That was one thing I didn't want to do. I thought if we were going to do anything, we would try to cut our expenditure in other areas because, I, I, you know, um, I guess families in our, and Marie and Canberra particularly, um, they relied on, you know, m um, their wages to, to support families. And so, um, I certainly didn't want to have an Im impact on their their lives negatively. So, we made the I mean I made the decision just to um, sit down with our um, our accountant and principal solicitor and look at ways in which we can reduce expenditure in other areas rather than sacking people. In the time that I was at, at Seals, um, it became a regular um, debate with not just the re um, the project officer but also the regional manager. Um, and um, unfortunately, you know, things didn't change. And so you were always, um, we were always struggling getting, you know, a, not the right amount of resourcing we needed to cover the courts. We, you know, we were required to cover the fieldies are the, the, the key. Um, I was a field officer for six years, so I probably, you know, um, a little bit biased. The fieldie in Canberra was Paul Brandy. Um, and Paul certainly had been around. He, at, by the time I came, he was well and truly entrenched as a fieldie and well regarded, both um, within the Aboriginal community, but also the legal system here. You know, um, legal aid, the courts, they all, and the police, they all knew Paul. I think the highs were the fact. I mean, I, I'm very community minded, community driven. I mean, I like to give back to my community. Even though I'm in government, I wear two hats. I wear a community hat and I wear a government hat, and. Um, Somehow you've got to balance the two, and um, and I try to think that I focus lean a little bit towards my community more than I do to government. Although I have to make sure I don't embarrass or um, have a different opinion to the minister. But um, so I, you know, I'm sort of um, I got a lot out of um, working at Seals. You get to see a lot of people um, get some really good outcomes out of the, the process of being represented by Seals. People who appreciate being represented and um, and then somehow you try to leave a legacy behind and then hope that that makes the organisation bigger and better.